Hey everybody, taking a day off from metal detecting and uh, taking a day trip up to Shasta Caverns. This, uh, this consists of, it's like a, a three adventures in one. You take a boat ride across the lake and then a bus ride up the mountain and then a tour of the, the caverns. Uh, it's my first time up here. Check it out and see what it's all about. Okay guys, we got our boarding passes and now we are headed out to the grass area to wait for our shuttle to take us down to the boat. All right guys, here's our shuttle getting ready to board. All right guys, here we are. We made it down to the boat. We made it to the shuttle. Well, alrighty, my name is Dylan. I'm your tour guide today. Everyone say good morning to Rachel, the most important person in your life right now. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, good morning everybody. You guys better be nice to her. <laughs> But Lake Shasta is a man-made reservoir. It's built to go up and down just like this. The water level is about 132 feet below the tree line. Uh, not even close to the lowest it's ever been. That was back in 1977 at 230 feet. So another 100 feet lower. Uh, last summer, or last October, was actually the second lowest it's ever been at 190 feet below the tree line. So it's not supposed to go below 165 at the end of this year. Uh, we're supposed to get a whole lot of rain this winter, so hopefully the lake will fill all the way up. I think it'll get pretty close. But since the lake level fluctuates so much every single year, our maintenance guys have a whole lot of fun on the track to rebuild this road. You probably saw the huge gray ship rolling across the lake passing by you guys. Uh, that's Dr. Dave. He runs the show behind the scenes, main maintenance guy over here. Uh, he was just rebuilding that road where the bus was. That's a tractor. So, that was an LCM6 yeah. LC World War II landing craft. Uh, so Elsie is the oldest and hardest working member of our staff. We trace the serial numbers back on that boat uh, to the D-Day invasion in Normandy. Not the first wave or the second or probably the third. That's why she's with us right now. Uh, it sank like three times in the slate, actually. We came wow. the next day, full of water, not floating, pulled it back up, pumped the water out, still working. Uh, we have arrived at our Vista Point. Talk about all those houseboats. Off to the left is that huge bridge. That is the Veterans of Foreign War Memorial Bridge. It is a two deck span support bridge, tallest of its kind in the world, 505 feet tall. The bottom half supports the top half. The bottom half is the Union Pacific Railway. The top half, two lanes going south, two lanes going north of I 5. So if you travel through Reading from the south, you crossed over that huge bridge. What a view, huh, guys? See the houseboats way across the lake there. So, we made it to the fun part. You guys survived the lake, we survived the bus. Hopefully everyone survives the cave. In my three years here, I've never lost anyone. Today is not the day. If you decide to die, wait two hours till you aren't my responsibility anymore, okay? I don't wanna see that. To start things off, does anyone wanna take a guess what kind of rock this is called? I'll give you a hint. Starts with lime, ends with stone. Any guesses? Granite, no. That was a good guess. Granite, limestone, both sedimentary rocks. This is called limestone. It's okay. Maybe next time you guys come back, you'll get it by yourself. I'll help you out today. <laughs> Limestone, sedimentary rock formed at the bottom of the ocean like granite. The crags in Dunsmere, you've probably heard of those. Granite looks like this, gray and big. So, limestone breaks down very easily, especially when it comes in contact with acid. 
The most common acid it comes in contact with is called weak carbonic acid, which is basically carbonated water. It's rainfall that collects CO2, carbon dioxide, the stuff we breathe out from rotting vegetation, dead animals, maybe even a dead Bigfoot way up in the mountain somewhere, who knows, but turns into that carbonated water. Just like sugar and soda breaks down our teeth, we get a cavity in our tooth. We're gonna walk into huge cavities. When we get a cavity, sucks. Painful, expensive dentist trip, you get a feeling. I hate it, you guys probably don't like it. The cave's lucky. All the formations and crystals you see inside today are the cave's natural feeling, like we would get at the dentist. Easy way to think of it, I'll get more scientific inside. If you can't read, it's okay, I'll tell you the rules. Number one, no food or drinks, only bottled water. Number two, no tobacco. I'm sure we're gonna be just fine, I trust you all. Number three, 658 stairs on the whole tour. Most of them inside are wet and slippery. I fall every single day of my life. If you watch me fall, you can laugh at me. That means if you guys fall and I see it, I get to laugh at you, so it's fair. And number four, stay with the tour. I have 11. I answer with 11, I leave with 11. I don't care who it is. As long as it adds up to 11 in the end, then technically I'm not in trouble. The number one rule, do not touch. They're wet rocks. That's what they feel like because that's what they are. If you want to touch a wet rock, pour water on this one and touch it outside. We have oils in our skin. It's illegal, you can get a fine. I can kick you out. I've never done it before. I don't plan on it today. I'll explain it more inside. If you guys are ready, feel free to hold the door open for the person behind you, please, and welcome in my office. We call this the discovery room. We call it the discovery room for two main reasons. Number one, we just walked through that man-made entrance. That tunnel was created back in 1959 by the Thompson Brothers. Uh, their goal with creating that tunnel was to get to the basement room. They thought they were blowing right into the middle of the basement room. They were 200 feet too low and actually discovered all of this down here. We talked about that a little bit in the bus. Uh, first reason why it's called the discovery room. Second reason is because you can find and discover almost every single rock formation throughout the cavern system like stalactites, all that cool stuff, just in this room. I'm only gonna talk about four in here, or we'd be stuck in here for two hours talking about rocks. I don't wanna do that, I'm sure you guys don't wanna do that. So, our first formation right here, a stalactite. Stalactites form at a rate of one inch every 100 years. Very long stuff process, that's why we don't wanna to touch anything. Oil and water are different densities. If we were to touch something, oil from our skin would rub off the formation, Water would flow over the top, allowing the formation not to form any further. This one is 40,000 years old. The one to the right is about 22,000 years old. All of the rock formations I talk about today are made of calcite crystal. It is formed from that weak carbonic acid coming through the limestone. It all depends how the water flows. They're all made of the same thing. Weak carbonic acid will come through the limestone and pull out minerals in the, cal or in the uh, limestone, mostly calcium, just like our bones, which then creates that calcite crystal or scientifically known as calcium carbonate. Now there are over 2,700 different calcite crystal formations. I only know 12. You'll see a bunch of water droplets falling from the stalactites. Two reasons for that. Number one, those are called cave kisses. If it lands on you, it's good luck. It means the cave likes you. Number two, forms an exclamation right over here. Can anyone guess what this one's called? We have stalactites and? Stalagmites. That's right, you passed fifth grade science class. Congratulations. If you did it, it's okay. I'll teach you everything today. Stalactites are tight to the ceiling of the cave. Stalagmites might reach the top. Easy saying we use to remember the direction of the formations. Slagmites will always form underneath stalactites. Eventually they will meet in the middle and form a column. Right over here is a great example of a smaller column. I will point out some large ones along the tour. Last formation I'm going to introduce in this room makes me super hungry in the morning. This is my first tour of the day. I haven't had breakfast or lunch. Right up here, making my mouth water. Cave bacon. Looks like bacon on the wall, right? This forms from the cracks of the limestone. That weak carbonic acid will flow down the cave wall, creates these calcite ridges. Eventually, gravity will pull the ridges off the wall. You can see this one is starting to come off. Bunch them all together and create cave drapery, drape lights, or cave curtains. You would be shocked at the questions I get every single day at my job. A lot of people ask if this is man-made. This is not concrete cement. This is not wax. You're looking at a bunch of real rocks inside a real cave, inside a real mountain. It's a little weird our voices don't echo, even though we're in a real cave like it does in TV shows and movies, right? That's due to the cave bacon and the cave drapery. It stops our sound from bouncing off the cave walls, creating an echo like it will in the next room because the next room has a lack of bacon. If you sing, you can sing in here. Lack of cave bacon, phenomenal echo. A lot of my tours ask me to sing. I only sing on people's birthdays. If it's your birthday today, it is a little too early in the morning. My voice isn't warm enough yet. Happy birthday. But welcome into the dome room. 
80 feet all the way up to the top, the second tallest room we have on the tour. The main rock formations in this room consist of shelf stone and calcite raft. Shelf stone is formed from standing water in a room for a long period of time. As you guys were coming across the lake, you probably noticed the lake level dropping, creating little lines in the shoreline where that water level once was. So that's what shelf stone basically is to us in the cavern system. You can see all the different levels where that water once was, creating these shelves or water lines. Shelf stone creates another formation called calcite raft, a thin layer of crust that floats right on top of water like ice over a pond. Except this stuff doesn't melt, it's a rock. Usually, usually it collapses as water drains out of a room. And this room it did, this huge pile rubble is all that broken down different layers of the calcite raft. Sometimes it stays intact. We call it false flooring. It looks like a floor you could step on, you would fall right through a very thin sheet of rock. No one is falling to the ground. We're all technically kind of safe in here. So, over the calcite raft, we have this muddy waterfall called flowstone. Flowstone is our fastest growing formation at a whopping rate of four inches every 100 years. So a little faster than everything else, but still super slow, so don't touch any rocks. To the right, another man-made tunnel. That is the second attempt of the Thompson brothers trying to get to the basement room. This time, they were heading the right direction. At the back of that tunnel is a wall. Behind that wall is a room full of water right now. When you're working with explosives, not very smart to blow something up if a lot of water is going to come at you, right? Luckily, they heard that room fill up. They did not have technology like we do nowadays. Uh, the only way they found that room is because it gurgled like the back of a toilet when you flush a tank. It's pretty funny. In the wintertime, if you're in here, you can hear it. If we were back there right now, we could hear it. So they heard that room, did blow the wall up. If they did, they wouldn't have survived. Water would be flowing through here right now. I wouldn't have a job as a tour guide, and you guys wouldn't have spent the last 20 minutes of your life listening to me talk about rocks. <laughs> Right up here, inside of a stalactites, first example of calcite crystal. Everything around you is made of calcite crystal. It is just covered in a bunch of different things you guys will not understand. We will call it dirt today. Sometimes the dirt gets washed away. If you saw any sparkles in the last room, that is from water flow over the formation and washing away the complicated dirt so we can kind of see the sparkles. Before you guys walked into the mountain, did anyone stop and think of earthquakes? You are in California. Yeah. Luckily, you're in Northern California. We don't get a whole lot of earthquakes. 15 years ago, there was a 5.692 earthquake, the largest recorded earthquake, I believe, in the Redding area, with 70 people, three tours inside this mountain. They didn't feel a single thing. Just like the Bay Area skyscrapers, LA skyscrapers built to withstand earthquakes. They shake during an earthquake, they sway. That's what this mountain's doing right now. So, all the cracks, like you notice, seismic action earthquakes. Rock doesn't bend like man-made steel or skyscrapers, it cracks. So if you've seen a crash in the ground, it's from earthquakes. The only time things ever fall, dynamite, man-made tunnels, and Mount Shasta. Do you guys know what Mount Shasta actually is? Active or dormant? Active, because if it was dormant, I wouldn't be talking about it. That'd make no sense. Active volcano. Uh, to be realistic, we're gonna be dead the next time it goes off. It is not our problem today. But in a thousand years, 2,000 years maybe, if people are inside this mountain, Bad news for them. That really sucks because huge rocks are like right there. Uh, we're sitting up in this pocket, and in 1789, the last eruption of Mount Shasta, that thing came crashing down. So, Bigfoot, volcano, dynamite, nothing Shasta ever falls. Erupted in 1789. 1789 was the last eruption. Oh, eight stories. On the bright side, 253 stairs going down. You fall. Make it down the bus faster. Bright side, everything. <laughs> So that is the worst part. We could have kept going. You may have noticed we made a detour, and you hear the stairs kept going straight up. This room was found in 1977. Addison tour in 1964, or 84, excuse me. 1964, tour started. So for 20 years, they went straight up 109 stairs. So we say 29 steps and get to see some more little rocks. Pretty nice, right? So we call it the crystal room. It's our giant crystal chandelier, right up here. The rock formations in the chandelier include helictites and helicmites, which are all those little pins and needles you see going every which way. Very rare. Found in 15% of cavern systems worldwide, and we were lucky enough not only to have them in here, but the first two rooms downstairs as well. They defy the laws of gravity because they were formed underwater. The room was found in 77, added seven years later because they had to drain it out from that man made tunnel right there and down from that natural tunnel as well. So, down here still pools up with water a little bit. Deepest I've seen it again was about two, three feet or so, uh, about 40, 45 years ago when this room was first opened up um, on the tour. It used to fill up to the rock wall right here, which would be super nice to swim in. It's supposed to be like 105 today. Yeah. 
So if it looked tight, it looked nice, formed due to water pressure, formed under water. That's why this one grows straight out and curls up at the air bubbles towards the top of water. This one looks like a little curly product. This one way up here looks like a tree root. I promise it is not a root. There's 600 feet of earth above us from this room right now. A lot of people think that's sunlight up there. That is something called LED, a light bulb. <laughs> Around the light bulbs, you'll see green stuff. Only plants we have in the cavern system, mold, algae, moss. There's no sunlight, no plants can grow. We provide the lights. The bacteria that we track in on our shoes from outside thrives around the light we provide, humidity in the air. Are there bats in my here? There are bats. This is actually the lowest room um, I've seen the bats get, which is really weird. I've only seen it happen one time. It flew in, went around us, went down that tunnel, came back out, and left. So we're almost there. I doubt we'll see any bats today. Um, the first one of the day that usually gets to see the most bats, only saw one. So. Who knows? Maybe you guys have a good luck charm. <laughs> but another new formation to introduce, cave popcorn. Don't eat it. It does not taste like popcorn. Will break your teeth. Pure calcium. If you swallow a piece, it'll taste like dirt, make your bones a little stronger. This forms from that weakening our carbonic acid. Splash amounts of limestone, 20 minerals from the inside of the rock outside. Most of the popcorn is on this side of the room. Due to a huge waterfall, all this glowstone was once actively flowing and splashing against the side, forming the popcorn. So, I have some more fun things to show you in this room if you want to see them. Perfect. I just needed an answer. I was going to show you regardless of your answer, but I just want to make sure. So, you said it was an octopus. It's actually Tom the Cave Turkey. Here's his head, eyeball, gobble, beard, body, feathers. Up and to the left, Chewbacca. A lot of people say that's Santa Claus, but I work here, I decided with the rockets, so that's Chewbacca. And this last one, you guys down there, join me up here, you won't be able to see it from down there. Everyone has seen the movie Ice Age, right? The first one, not the other four, those aren't very good. Sip the song, Strap the Squirrel, Maybe, the Boy Man. Who's the fourth character? And it's not Baby. You got Big T? There we go. Diego, the Saber Tooth Tiger. There's his head, his mouth's open, body, paw, other paw. As you can see, Diego is leaping across. He must be pretty hungry. He's going right to the raw cake bacon. <laughs> if Diego doesn't like raw cake bacon, we always have extra crispy at your home. And one last thing to show you, we'll sweep you right back. So, I'm sure you've seen a Himalayan salt lamp. It's a rock with a light bulb in it. You can plug it in the wall and it goes like that. Don't lick it, that does not taste like salt. But follow me up to the basement. There's our boat coming back to get us. 